Good evening. Joe, if you want to take the roll call, please. Ms. Simaroli? Here. Mr. Nath? I saw him sign in. I'm here, sorry. That's okay. Ms. Mr. Tolmer? Here. Mr. Lennon? He said he'll be late. Mr. Livingston? Here. And I'm Joe Cower. So to start, do we have any speakers this evening? Anybody that would like to speak that signed up? Excuse me, I thought the speakers came at the end of your meeting, not at the beginning of your meeting. A few weeks, well, a few in February, we actually started to have it in the beginning, just to keep it Great idea. More organized, especially with the upcoming issues or uh, discussions that we're going to have. So I think uh, I think that's a, a major improvement. OK, um, uh, I'd like to speak if not, unless there are others who want to speak before me, then go ahead. Well, I don't know. Is there anybody else that signed up, Joe? No, no. OK. All right. So go ahead, Bob. Okay. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I, uh, I was curious about uh, what I, I had given uh, our manager, uh, Joe Cower, three, uh, I don't know, packets of information. Uh, the one was uh, January, February the 7th. The second was February the 15th. The third one, I don't know when that was after that, but primarily the first one uh, was a result of a, uh, a aerial photograph that was sent to me by one of the people at the Army Corps of Engineers showing the original route of the McLaughlin, of the McLaughlin Creek under the Baldwin Street Bridge and the Railroad Street Bridge. And the, the, just to get to the point, it shows that the uh, construction of a culvert over uh, the original route changed mm -hmm. the contour of the more gradual right-hand 90-degree turn north uh, toward Collier Township greatly. And it has been essentially the cause of the flooding of two major areas of uh, Bridgeville. And I want to mention something else that I just found about three days ago. I found the permit that was issued by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection to allow that culvert to be built. And it was, you should be able to somehow politically get DEP to pay for replacing that culvert with a bridge because they endorsed and permitted its construction and it's been uh, verified by DEP, a 1980 DEP study, a study I did about four years ago myself and the study was just done I think last year by the engineering school at the University of Pittsburgh that the uh, opening under the culvert is something like 14 or 17 a cubic feet of water a second, and it should have been double that. So that's something for you to think about, okay, because I think you have a, a very good argument there to have that bridge replaced. And the other thing I wanted to emphasize, the other thing that the first you know, packet of information uh, illustrated was the the flooding is not being caused by the Baldwin Street uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Bar Hill Road Bridge is being caused by the culvert. And if you take a closer look at that, uh, uh, despite what uh, any alleged professionals claim, uh, you'll find out that that's a fact. And the third uh, uh, packet of information I gave Joe to email to you guys was uh, it was primarily about it was a more detailed plan uh, showing the solution to the uh, Bower Hill Road and traffic congestion problem and the importance of uh, making of, of not eliminating Bower Hill Road from the cement company to the McLaughlin Run Road uh, 
left intersection, but keeping it this two lanes heading west toward Washington Avenue and making Baldwin Street uh, two lanes east uh, heading in the opposite direction. And I think, though, I think the Lennon Smith engineering firm did do a study or, or did uh, uh, right. provide everybody a drawing that indicates that that uh, that eight foot, 150 foot long ramp from uh, right next to the Bar Hill Road Bridge down to Baldwin Street is certainly uh, viable. Okay. And uh, and uh, just to sum up, uh, the uh, I'm sure you're all in, knowledgeable to some extent about <clears throat> PennDOT's desire to increase its uh, never-ending desire for more millions of dollars a year to build roads and whatever they want to spend it on by putting a toll booth on I-70 right 9 right by the bridge or on top of the bridge or exit. Uh, you guys should be outraged about that even uh, being mentioned by PennDOT as a possibility, considering that they have ignored the traffic congestion problem on Washington Pike through Safed, Bridgel, and Collier for 50 years. Okay. It All right. The well, I, um, I got a question too. Go okay. ahead. Um, you said that somebody gave you that information. Can you clarify who it was? About what? Inf what information is that? You said that there was somebody gave you the aerial photo and everything, and showing you the where the uh, where the flooding was or what caused the flooding. You said somebody in. She didn't say who gave it to you, gave you that information. Yeah, it was it was a, a young lady. I have her name somewhere. Oh, it'll be easier for me to get. But tell me, did you guys tell me have you guys been receiving the emails of these three uh, packets of information? And have you been reading or studying the the, the drawings? The on the first one, the very first drawing was a was a copy as best that I could make it of the original uh, aerial photograph of uh, the route of the uh, McLaughlin Run Creek going under the railroad bridge. Ms. Simaroli? Yes. Uh, this is Joe. I, yes. I just want to state that uh, I did not share this with Planning Commission. Uh, Mr. Fryer asked me to share that with Borough Council, okay. and it was shared with Council, not Planning Commission. Okay. All right. Well, oh, why, Joe, why Joe, I'm so, Joe, excuse me. I'm sorry. I thought you were sending it to the Planning Commission as well. I might mention, by the way, the aerial photograph, uh, it has 1959 is the year in which it was taken but i'll be glad to uh get the, the, the i guess the woman's name uh, from the army corps of engineers that sent it to me i would have no access of getting this stuff okay but well, at any we'll... rate uh I'll, I'll i'll send you i'll send the guys on the planning committee i don't know joe can you would it be too much tr trouble for you to email the guys on the planning commission that stuff to not at all all right we'll okay take a look at them um... Okay. Okay. And at any rate, I'd like to sum up just by saying this: since you guys are, uh, when you guys invited, uh, I guess uh, the, the various uh, city planning companies to make proposals to devise a comprehensive development plan for Bridgeville, what did you ask them for? What did you uh, did you define any of the problems? that you'd like to get resolved when you sit or when you, act, I don't know, was it done on the internet? Was it done in the newspaper? How did you invite these people to present, uh, uh, make uh, offers to become engaged with you? And incidentally, the companies you've chosen, from what I know, they're outstanding. But what did you ask them? What, sol what problems did you ask them to solve? Listen, and um, why don't we, Bob, if you don't mind, why don't we move on with our business and we'll discuss that at the end. All right. Oh, because wonderful. There wonderful. was an RFP that had to go out to request information and okay. it returned there based upon the RFPs. It was returned to us answering their solutions or their their ideas <clears throat> in regards to a planning mechanism to design a update to our comprehensive plan. 
So. Oh, that's good. I'll be ha- I'll be happy to hang around and listen. And once again, uh, thanks for the opportunity of uh, giving you guys my uh, thoughts about the problem. But this is this is going to be the most important thing you guys do in your lifetimes. Excuse me for that's not an exaggeration. But now is the time to get the total comprehensive plan that will solve Bridgeville's 50-year-old traffic congestion problem and establish the economic basis for this community. But uh, thank you for allowing me to speak, and I'll be happy to listen to your discussions of the issue. All right. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Any other questions for Bob? All right. So should we move on to the approval or the adoption of the February 22nd, 2021 meetings, meeting minutes? Um, anybody have any questions or issues with it? No? All right. I'd make a motion to um, adopt as okay. written. Okay. All in favor? Second. You need a second. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? All right. Motion passes. Now, one of the things that um, I did was I took it upon myself to move the do- new business um, of the discussion of the scoping, the preliminary scoping, things that did not make it into the comprehensive plan update. And Joe, I sent this all to you, to the committee members, all right? And basically, when I looked at what we had done, Tim, what you had done so great, was to pull out things that I felt perhaps needed to be addressed. Now, by far, if anybody has any questions or any issues, please bring them forward at this time. But these are the things that I saw. Small town charm, borough cleanup. Um, let's see, what else? The property. Can you take that up a little bit there, Tim? Uh, the jump. All right. Evaluation of existing parcels, traffic study. And code enforcement was something that was taken over. So we're not even going to bother with that. Does anybody have any additions to this list? All right. Justine, the only question is so where, where you've got some of these things being partially included in the scope of the comprehensive study, where right. what's the point of comparison that you're using there? Only because I just wanted to basically say that there were some things that were like um, small time chart. All right. Some of that is included in the uh, comprehensive plan and the request for the R in the RFP. Just okay. Just by by virtue of what you're asking them to put the solution Correct. together. I got Correct. you. Okay. But I mean, you know, like like small town charm. Yes. Are they going to look at Main Street? Are they going to look at the businesses and so forth? Yes. 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 But at the same time, you know, do we want to? clean up Main Street? Do we want to, you know, add flowers, that sort of thing? That's why I sort of broke it down into what was included and what was not. All right. So again, any additions to this? And did I leave out anything? I mean, we talked about parks and stuff and, you know, but I think that might be a separate issue on its own. Correct. That's what I was thinking. I mean, yeah. I know that that in the RFP, I had requested uh, the parks be looked at as to, you know, the efficiency and the effectiveness and that yeah. stuff. Um, I think growing parks or adding to the parks, um, we can get an understanding, a better understanding before we even start the process. Sure. All right. Dale, any, any comments? Do you think that pedestrian safety is included enough into the RFP? Well, between the RFP and and the the active the right uh, active, active Allegheny, plan, right? I, I you know I, I think we're that's one of the things we're we're kind of on our way with right, um, and that's going to be something that we're going to continue to talk about. It's not going to be solved 
this year or next year, but it's, right. it's you know, we're, we're starting down that road. Okay. So, all right. I'm fine with it. Okay. So now, since Tim, you did such a great job with all of our forms last year, do you think, or does anybody have any ideas to whether or not these would work? Your, your charts or your evaluations would work for this process or do we wanna go less formal? Uh, for, well, for which process, sorry, just- the, the, the scoping process to determine how we're gonna handle these. I mean, last month you said that you're, you're looking at the low hanging fruit. You know, are these the, are these the items that you were thinking about when we discussed that? Yeah, yeah, it was the okay. stuff that kind of got left behind when we said okay, of all the seven or eight items that we talked about, the the one that we all confidently move forward on was let's ask for the the funding for the comprehensive plan. Some of that stuff, I think. Um, and I forget who made the point, but it was like, look, if we if we pursue too many of these other things in the absence of that, we're kind of putting the cart in front of the horse. And wouldn't it be better to do that in a more logical and an analytical plan way? So, yeah, right. these are the things that were left over whenever Correct. we had tabled them at the end of last year. So your concept <laughs> scoping template with this, is that too convoluted for this process or would it work? I mean, that was a, a kind of a point in time activity to just put a little bit of meat on the bones of what those concepts were. I think if we're if we're kicking around the, you know, which ones of these do we want to move forward on and how. Right. Might not be a bad place to start, but it's going to very quickly get to the point of saying, OK, how do we practically start to execute some of these? Correct. Things? OK. Yeah. Justine. Yeah. I think maybe I don't know. We could, I mean, we're not talking about like when we did last year when we worked on it. I mean, there was a lot of different topics we wanted to address. Right. You know, to narrow it down to, you know, four that we really liked. And these were kind of like we talked about the low hanging fruit. Um, and particularly, you know, one of the reasons why these are here is, from my understanding, is we're not talking about a lot of money. You know, right. These are things right. that would be more sweat equity and, you know, like borrow cleanup. So I don't know, maybe it's something where we can get together and figure out, okay, put it, put a dollar figure. What, what, what would be the cost of, you know, what would be the cost involved with these? How many people do you think we would need to, you know, if we're going to do a borough cleanup, you know, right. would that involve like organizing, um, you know, a group of volunteers or something like, you know, right. and just figure out what resources, what resources would be needed to do each each of these items and based off of what those resources are, are they realistic? Right, okay. So, and I agree. I think that, that we can keep this somewhat less formal than the prior because this is, these are things that either involve the community or very little dollars. Right. Um, so I guess, do, do we want to take a look at these and actually put down some thoughts as to whether what we think might be a good idea and then maybe triage what everybody's saying and, and, and put the notes, evaluate everything and then determine what's important and the importance and the cost. Sure, I guess. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Tim, you're the analytical one. What do you think? <laughs> let me let me just back up a step. Is is the intent for us to pick a couple of things that we can start to move on in the next couple of months? Correct. That's what we're trying to get to. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What I'm what I was thinking at if you're looking at a schedule for the rest of the year, because I know I think by this time last year we already had your schedule. I mean, yeah, you yeah. had everything down pat and we knew what we had to do. So I'm trying to, to go that route, yep. all right? So initially what I was thinking was that we do this little informally, we present or we look at everything that we think is included in this and then discuss it 
and then say, let's get everything on the table or at least two of them on the table in April and two of them in May with a solution or an issue to move certain things forward in June. Mm. And then if, you know, the plans include money or funding or whatever, we move that into the August, September timeframe to council so that they could include it in their budgets. Yeah. Or okay. I don't know, do, uh, Joe, is there a certain time that, that the grants fall in to effect or are they any time throughout the calendar year? It, it's not specific. It's specific to the program. So Okay. All right. All right. So Grant season. <laughs> right. Is there a budget season? Yes, it's, you nailed it. That is a, there is a budget season. Yeah. Right. Right. So any comments, any ideas? I mean, I'll certainly to, you know, I'll flesh out my thoughts a little bit and then email you guys and see whether or not you're willing to, if you think we can adhere to that schedule. All right. And one general question, I, I should probably know this at this point, Joe, but um, when it comes to budget stuff, I know we're, we're covered for the comprehensive plan or at least the percent of it. Do we have like a line item that's got even a couple of hundred dollars or a couple of thousand dollars in the event that we come up with things like this mid-year, let's make stuff up and say, we're going to spend this Saturday beautifying Washington Pike for spring. Is that uh, just think, a hard no at this point or? No, no. I think it depends on the, soon? it depends on the, on the project because uh, some things just fit just general operations, but there's a lot of things in our budget this year that we've already pulled the trigger on. that came out of last year's planning commission meetings. We spent five yeah. grand on welcome signs that will be going up within the next okay. couple of weeks. We put money in to do the comprehensive plan to start that. Uh, yep. We put money aside to do some pedestrian improvement signage. So uh, a lot of it has been answered. So it's just Rome wasn't built in a day. We were yep. to yep. be no, cognizant of that. Sense. Well, you know, even if, even if it comes down to we're looking at you know, a, a thing for 2021, you know, um, you know, maybe it's just doing an Earth Day and marketing for an Earth Day on Earth Day, whatever, April 17th or whatever. Um, so, and also too, I have no problem going out and trying to perhaps get flowers or whatever. You know, it's just that we would need some assistance in yep. planting those flowers. And in which case, does that come out of the, the general? Yeah, I think it's something that we could work out. Okay, all right. So, I mean, let's, let's go grand and see what happens, right? Or is that, are you discouraged? Go ahead, Dale. Oh, uh, go ahead and finish this. I, I, I do have one question comment regarding the this list that you put together okay all right no i was just i mean i don't want to discourage anybody you know but i think that we can have a wish list i mean it doesn't help to have a wish list and and see what happens you know so if not this year next year mm -hmm. all right um justine yeah one of the issues that was kind of hanging out there from last year was parking. You know, right, right. Um, um, is something that we want to try and, and further yes. along this, this, this year? Yeah, Joe and I talked. I'm going to talk to parking uh, group and see if they would be willing to visit with us in April. And... Um, you know, just talk or and number one, answer questions. And number two, come up with some sort of ideas to, you know, what their feelings are in regards to the parking situation in Bridgeville. All right. Well, so, in, um, in, in some of the previous discussions that I had with them last year, uh -huh. um, you know, they have, you know, they've got ideas about expanding some of the parking lots, but um, you know, 
I'm not sure that there's they perceive that there's a parking parking issue in, in Bridgeville. And well, it, yeah. It, I know I know that you know we've had people come before us over the last couple of years saying, you know, hey, you need to do parking here, you need to do parking there. Uh, and I'm not sure whether it's something that we need to look at that we should be tackling or or if it's you know just discussions to be having with the parking authority or or well in in my opinion. I'd rather have an open discussion with them and ask the question and have them ask them to answer. So it's, it's on the table. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's all about having some open dialogue. Right. Right. So, all right. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Joe, do we have to do anything with this situation or can we move on to other business? I think we're good. Okay. All right. So now this is all you, right? Yeah. yeah just a couple quick updates for the month. Uh, as Dale was talking about earlier, we applied for a grant a couple months ago to complete the active transportation plan. Uh, we did receive a $22,000 grant from the active Allegheny program uh, for this effort. Uh, and the borough is putting $5,000 of our engineering budget towards the project. So the $27,000 a budget project that can hit the ground running once we get approval from the county to proceed. This will address pedestrian issues that's been talked about for a long time, uh, active, uh, complete streets, you know, bike bike mode, uh, where, where the pedestrian issues that Dale was talking about, trail connectivity. So a lot of these big ticket items could be addressed with this active transportation plan. Uh, I'm working on an RFP for that project right now that, uh, I want to bounce off the county and once I get their blessing, I'd like to get your input as well, so that if there's anything I'm missing or you'd like to see included in the project, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get your feedback with that. So it's actually good news that we don't have to wait. The, the, the money is here and uh, this, is, this is a good thing for the town because hopefully we can put you know, a pen to paper and solve some of these uh, active transportation issues. Right. Um, so this is all planning, is that correct? I mean, is this correct? But okay. and the the goal is it's implementable planning. We okay. want you know, short, medium, long range. This is how you do it. This is what it costs. If it's big, this is where you go to get the money. Oh, that okay. kind of thing. Something that we could actually use. Okay. So it, it should be a very good project that uh, has some fruits at the end. Do we have a time frame that that has to be spent or? Uh, we only got the notice that we were awarded uh, the day of the council meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, All so right. this is very fresh. Okay. All right. And uh, we just sent the acknowledge back, I mean, back to the county uh, last week saying, yeah, we accept the grant. So I, I anticipate something very soon. So All it's right. moving quick. All right. And hey, thank you for doing that. I mean, that's great that we can at least take some of these things and get a better, under nothing else, get a better understanding as to where we could improve. And we can get a professional transportation engineer right. giving us facts. Correct, good, good. All right, and when do you think that RFP will be out to the out? Uh, I'm hoping that uh, we can have the approval from the council to release it at our April meeting so we can have it out okay. April, May. So uh, okay. right. I'll fast track it, provided that the county's okay with that. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Dale had something. I I, I want to you know commend Joe for his uh, work with the um, the grant application. Good job, Joe. Yeah. Good job getting some money. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the second thing was the PennDOT safety review of Washington Avenue. Uh, it took a while to get a response back from PennDOT, but I, I got a letter back from PennDOT on our request we sent a while back, asking for them to do a formal safety review of Washington Avenue. That was our pedestrian concerns that came out of that pedestrian accident uh, late last year. Uh, they acknowledged uh, our request and they said, we'll have their safety review between three to five weeks from last Friday. Okay. So if not for the April meeting, we'll definitely have their suggestions for our May meeting. All right. And then the third thing I had was regarding the comprehensive plan. Uh, Borough Council ha has directed me to apply for a grant that, that will basically defray the cost of the project. 
as you've seen, the proposals came in, it, it appears to be a $75,000 project spread over two years. Uh, we've been talking to the state and, there's the, and the state DCD planner regarding our project. Uh, I submitted a grant application last week for it. The grant would fund half, so 37.5. We wouldn't know if the grant's award until late summer, early fall. So that, that's where we're at with the comp plan. Uh, regarding that though, as you know, we have six proposals received. Uh, the council is gonna hopefully set up a committee that's made up of planning commission and council members to shortlist those proposals and, and interview uh, firms uh, over the next uh, couple months so that it, when it comes time, if we know our grants award or not by the end of summer, we can proceed either way, one doing it ourselves or, or uh, without it. Joe, did you say council is owning, putting that subgroup together? Yes. I think it's going to be a joint effort, Tim. Okay. So, That's the hope right now. Go ahead, Dale. Well, um, pushing it back, is that that would push back the completion date also? I, I think so, Dale, yes. Okay, all right. I, I just try to get a clarification. That's all. Yeah. I, I know, like, I know we wanted to run with this like yesterday, but 75,000, I, I think it's, it's more responsible if we can wait a couple months and, and save us $37,000. It, it's smart. It, two oh, months aren't going to make a difference on issues. that has been here 50 years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I, 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 I think that's, you know, um, I have no problem with it. Um, I don't know, you know, what that does to commitments from the, from the, um, the consultants. Now, we've been in discussions because I had a couple of them ask about, you know, where we are, but uh, I think it's, uh, these are questions for when we interview. Okay. But uh, we have letters of support already for the comprehensive planning project from our state rep, our state senator and the school district so far. So, oh, okay. so it seems like uh, we're, we're checking the right boxes. Good job. And we've already had a lot of conversation with the state, so we're not going in cold. They know where we are, what our issues are, and uh, what we're hoping to accomplish. Okay. Joe, I have a question about this. I'm sorry. Was that Tim? Yeah, um, go ahead. I, go, ahead. I, go ahead. I just have a question. So um, does the school district, if we got their, their input already, which is great, um, does anything depend upon the outcome of the census in 2020? I mean, demographics, age population, you know, that sort of thing. Does that, because if I recall correctly in 2005, they, as the Macklin who did it, did look at the incomes and the, you know, patient, I mean, a patient, the populations. So, I don't exactly know when the 2020 census is probably going to come out, but I mean, is that our problem or is that a problem? I honestly don't know, Justine. Okay. All right. Okay. I mean, that stuff should be, I remember looking into that when this idea first came out, Justine, and I just Googled real quick to keep me honest here that all that data was released April 1st of 2020. So it should be there for the taking the 2020 analytics assuming they stayed on schedule in the mix okay last year. All, right. all right yeah okay thanks um question just to, to play out that conversation on the the additional two months joe are there implications to what we would or would not do based on that grant or is it just a function of how we're going to pay for it in the end it just a function of how we're going to pay for this that's all what's then what's the idea of pausing to wait for that grant decision to catch up if we're going either way $50,000, because if it's a $75,000 project, we have $25,000 budgeted for this year. Next year, we got to come up with 50. And uh, if we have, if we only have to come up with 37.5 spread over two years, we can afford it next year. Fifth, coming up with 50 grand next year uh, isn't going to be that easy. Okay, so. That's really it. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Any, any other questions, comments? I have one other thing, Justine. Yeah. Um, I was contacted by Justin 
Uh, no, Beinhauer. Yeah. Yes. He get a hold of you? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Um, apparently, uh, he he's been out doing um, some some trying to gather people, interested parties, that type of thing, um, for for a trail along Chartier's Creek. Right. And, um, I he did a did a presentation at the library back in 2018. I sent him an email shortly thereafter, um, and last week he sent he replied to that email. Okay. Um, and he's been trying to get to trying. We've been trying to play phone tag and stuff. Anyway, um, I directed him to Joe Cower. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know where he's at with stuff. Uh, you know, other than I haven't connected with him, so I'm not sure what all's. Um, but Joe, I don't know if he's got a hold of you yet or. Yeah, he called me on Friday. Uh, I invited him to our, when we have the active, you know, Allegheny project moving forward, we'll have public meetings with that, that uh, he can sit down to the table then. I, I suggested that to him. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Would it be of any benefit to have him come in and talk to us at a, at a meeting or no? That's at your a planning decision. Meeting. I mean, we can. I've him. talked to Joe. I've talked to him in the past about what he, what you know, his thoughts, and they're in line with what we've <laughs> talked about. You know, this basically the same things we've, you know, we've talked about as far as connecting, right? Not only connecting our parks, but connecting the parks to other communities' parks, right? Um, you know, so it it would I mean for him to come to a meeting and for other people to hear what he what he's talking about. From a from a different a different voice, right? That idea, Dale. What do you think? Yeah, I you know I mean it, it seems like he's he's trying to he's trying to rally the troops to 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 you know get a couple of trails done. right, and um, you know I, the more people that that um, you know we can talk to about this, the more interest that we can bring to the table. You know, the easier more hands make um, you know light work well, right well, not only that dale but in, as joe you know you know when you go looking for money if it's for bridgeville you know you can get some money but if you're looking at multi municipals asking for the same thing you know they're much more uh agreeable you know they like it whenever you start collaborating with other organizations um whether it be a community or whatever um so you know, getting getting him because he wants to. You know, he doesn't want to just be. Hey, I want to put a trail in Upper Saint Clair. He's like, I want Upper Saint Clair to connect to South Bayette and Bridgeville. Right. You know? Well, Joe, let me ask you a question. Was it last year at one point, or may, you know, it had to have been last year? That did you have a discussion with Upper Saint Clair when you were talking about this multi-sectional uh, comprehensive plan? Did you not say that St. Clair could have been interested in connecting with Chartier's Trail, with our trail in Chartier's Park, in closing that gap or no? No, we did. I met with them about a month and a half, two months ago. Okay. Uh, it was uh, Bridgeville, Upper St. Clair, and South Fayette. The managers of the three towns met, and uh, uh, there was uh, enthusiasm to do it. Uh, basically, the, the key is that uh, Allegheny Land Trust to see if they would be interested or willing to connect okay. through their property to Chartiers. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Because Upper St. Clair at the time, uh, they're working on a plan to connect the rec center to the Montour Trail okay. uh, through Cecil to, to, to hit the Montour Trail. So the timing of going a couple more feet into Bridgeville, uh, they liked it. Okay. So the, the energy is there. Okay. And the timing is right right now. Perfect. All right. We just need to we need to create a partnership with the land trust. Okay. Do we know, uh, um, Mike? Do you know anybody at the land trust? I could find out. Okay. I'll do some digging. Right. I have a contact already. Oh, okay. Right. I just have yet to reach out to him. Okay. All right. But, but I have it. So maybe. Uh, uh, one day this week, Mike, if you could call me, I could use your help with this. Oh, I got a call. I mean, I'm, we're getting together this week anyway, so. 
All right, so when it comes time. All right, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Anything else before we new, move on to the next one? Do we want to talk about pedestrian safety? Did the uh, Chief Chad report anything of outside of the numbers? He, he gave us a report a couple months back that summarized, right. I believe, okay. 17 pedestrian-involved right. accidents over 10 years. And that data was included uh, when we do the RFP for the active transportation plan. So okay. I think when it, the professional planner will be able to use that to, to work with. Okay. All right. Well, um, oh, I know. Hold on for one second. Let me get my notes here. Um, Sorry, one, Justine, real quick. Can I, uh, I'm like a step behind tonight. Can you, Joe, what is the, what is the, is there any overlap between the safety review that PennDOT's doing in the next three to five weeks, plus or minus, and that active transportation effort? Do they have anything in common? I honestly don't know. Uh, I know, I, I think it's different because, uh, for example, uh, the response back from PennDOT, I, I think they're going to be looking at more of like pedestrian safety or pedestrian like warning signage and crosswalks in that area just on, on that little scope on Washington Avenue because uh, in their letter uh, it says we will review the area and look at overall safety with a focus on pedestrian safety along the corridor. Based on our current workload we hope to have the results within the next three to five weeks. Being that the review is focused on pedestrians please keep in mind that pedestrian signage and markings are owned and maintained by the local municipality. We will forward you the results of the study upon completion. So I think they're just going to point out, you know, public works issues within <clears throat> that district for us to improve or needs to be upgraded or maintained. Okay. Do we give them that 17 incident report? Yes. Or do they have access to all that just by virtue of being who they are? Uh, both. But uh, okay. they were actually here in person, and I explained to them the letter that we sent to them and all your, your slides from last year and the chief's report. They had all that data. Okay, cool. Yeah. And they understood where we were coming from. So uh, hopefully uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good report. That's something yep. we could use to improve here. All right. Um, the only other, I do have a couple of things that I just want to th we'll throw out there. All right. Number one, I did my first answer. We're going to invite the parking authority. Um, the other question that I have for you all is, are, can you, are you, do you think that we have anything left over from 2021 that hasn't been addressed or has fallen by the wayside or whatever? I mean, you know, signage or, you know, street cleaning or whatever. Is there anything that you can think of or if you look through your notes that you can come up with that you think has fallen by the wayside. If you do, then let's just talk about it at the next meeting. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. And also too, one of the things that uh, for me, knowledge is a little bit dangerous. All right. And a couple of weeks ago, I attended one of those borough.org meetings where they were talking about protocols um, for council meeting and planning meetings. And one of the comments um, that stuck, struck in my, stuck in my mind was that the person who presented suggests that we do a protocol for planning meetings. And number one, I think it, all, it has to do with the Sunshine Act. And number two, um, I'm certainly obviously not aware of all the protocols that need to be addressed, even though I do have my Robert's book for dummies. Um, so anyway, so what I'd like to do, do you think, I'd like to ask your opinion, do you think that we need to address a protocol for planning meetings? So when you say like sunshine, I mean, I know like on council, you know, that there's a role. Correct. Does that apply to 
you know, people like on planning commission? Well, according to the person that spoke, yes. And the thing is, especially now with everything happening via Zoom, all right, um, you know, addressing, identifying yourself, giving your street address and making sure that that goes into the notes. All right, and then the other, the other thing that struck, uh, stuck out to me was addressing the speakers. Mm -hmm. you know, actually speakers signing up and identifying themselves as they speak. Yeah, you're right. Because like we, we assume, I mean, we're all sitting here and, and you know, uh, Bob's talking and, but it was, you know, we all know who he is, but yeah, in, normally, yeah, you would say, state your name and your address. Right, right, so. right. So I just think I, I'm a stickler for, for getting things out on paper. So All right. So then you want to ask Bob to state his name and his address for right. his meeting. You can see. Right. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's, if you're yeah. going to do that, you might as well start today. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then last but not least, any comments about that? I, I think there's I, I think there's some some um I, I think it's a good idea to, to add some formality to to, to the program. Um just for for you know the just to keep things going and just to be able right. to keep track of things as we as we move along right um, you know one of the things that was talked about in that in that meeting um in that program that you were just mentioned was um you know a lot of a lot of um commissions have time limits right or speakers, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, three minutes, whatever it is. And um, I don't know if that's something we want to consider or not. Um, I, I just, well, I, I, there's an upside and a downside to it. Right, right. And, and, I mean, personally, I think up front, as we, if we, we do it up front, because we're going to be busy. I mean, we're going to definitely be, it, I mean, that's just with comprehensive plan updates that we're going to be busy with. That's not including other <laughs> business that we have to deal with. So I just, I mean, you know, I just think that we do formalize it and, and put it on paper. What do you think, Larry? Oh, well, Larry I think, here? Go ahead. Yeah, I think we, the protocols you're talking about, I know we've, we had those in place at one time. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to tell you that they were rigidly enforced, uh, the time limit on speakers, you know, identifying, you know, their street address and whatnot. I mean, that's something that we've done over the years. Uh, I think it's probably more likely to happen in a live meeting where we're all in the same room than it is on these Zoom meetings sometimes. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of protocol, if you will. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's the perfect segue to my next question. Do we want to start doing in-person meetings at the borough building? Does anybody have objections or any thoughts as to what we can do, if we should do it? I have reservations. Okay. Primarily because I've got a, a very high risk individual living in the house with us. Correct. And so. I, and Joe and I were talking earlier, and I wanted to know whether or not you could attend via Zoom. All right. And if we can accomplish that, I mean, it's it's really it doesn't matter to me. I have both of my vaccinations. All right, so I know that if we do the six, and the only person, only thing I come home to is my dog, all right? So, you know, I don't have any outside influences that I have to deal with. So I can I completely understand your situation. Um, but, I, you know, anybody else have any thoughts as to whether or not we should go back into person meetings? Uh, excuse me, Justine. Can I comment on this? Who's talking? No, not yet. 
Not yet. Afterwards. Let us finish this. Okay, fine. Uh, Justine, for for my part, I, I you know I miss I miss the in person. Um, I want to be very sensitive that everybody's got their right. You know, different situations and and comfort levels. I, I have no reservations if we go back to in person with you know I'm I'm expecting the normal <laughs> safety protocols that are in place, but I I'd be all for it. Well, the one thing that that uh, I did notice when council was having their in person meetings that the uh, audio was less than stellar. Um, I mean, you can, so I don't know, Joe, did, was that taken care of, the audio? Slightly better. We have microphones, but it doesn't completely, uh, it won't be to the quality that you have yeah. right here. See, that's the joy about the Zoom. You know, you can hear everybody, so. Um, I don't know. Do you, you guys want to think about it? I'm the only thing I can say, if you haven't watched any of the council meetings where they were actually held in person, then maybe go back um, on YouTube and listen to them because they were very muffled. Yeah, that's that's the downside for the public. I mean, for us, you know, it's for selfish reasons. You know, we want to be in the same room right. discussing stuff. Um, but for the public, yeah, and they need to see this. So right, right. That's, that's the big reservation for, right. for me, I guess. Okay. And if it feels like that should be something fairly easy to remedy, no, Joe? Yeah. Like with an operational budget that we get a recorder or a microphone. I don't know how many microphones into... do you need? You know, like we had microphones in there for the room, uh, not, uh, I, I run it off the <laughs> laptop. Well, why don't we look into that and see if there's somehow we can get better audio and everybody think about, oh, you know, whether or not we want for the time being want to stay with Zoom. So, I mean, do we have to have the meeting at the borough council building at the mm. borough building? Can we go to the fire department or is that reserved for extra large meetings? We could ask. I know there's discussions of moving borough council meetings to the fire hall so that mm -hmm. social distancing could be done. I don't know. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, personally, uh, Justine, I'd be fine with live meetings uh, like you. I've had both my shots. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But again, you know, it's going back to what the the public needs to hear and how that how they hear it. So that's my only issue because it was frustrating. The two uh, that I saw is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. So even even if we have a a um, meeting for the commission, if we've got public, you know, and we've got the the social distancing and take all the precautions, if we've got a number of people from the public that want to come in and and join us, or we're having a public hearing or something. Um, you know, that, that could push the limits or, or could right. be a little dice. That's uh, so could you, if you had somebody that wanted to speak, because I know, like, just for example, like Allegheny County, when they have their council, the Allegheny Council meetings, if you want to speak, you have to be on the agenda, is it, if I'm not mistaken. You can't right. just show up at an right. Allegheny County Council meeting. And Same just with Upper St. Clair. What? Oh, or even, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you just can't just show up. So you would have to basically tell, you know, email the borough and say, look, there's a meeting tomorrow. I would, I want to be on the agenda to speak or on the list to speak as a visitor. Right. And, and again, know, that goes that goes back to the protocol, establishing exactly. what's included so in the then protocol. You, then you could have, if, if you're going to, if you, you know, you know, you're going to have, you know, uh, five planning commission members, uh, our borough manager and you know maybe two or three visitors if you know if needed and so you know you want and then anybody else who wants to watch the meeting can watch it on zoom okay all right well let's start that you have to put it on zoom you could just do like your regular camera or whatever right i guess i i appreciate the point too dale but <laughs> 
seven years of history, I can't remember us ever pushing the occupancy boundaries of the borough building for our planning commission meetings. I'd love to get there, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure it's I mean, something I've seen to date. Yeah, council meetings are a different thing. I mean, there's been times where the council meetings, you know, they were outside in the hall, but that's a little different. Yeah, well, yeah. My... All right, so any other comments? So then I'll, I'm going to give Bob Fryer, two minutes, Bob. Well, I got one quick, one quick question before, okay. Justine. Um, the, for interviewing the firms for the uh, comprehensive, and to go, um, do we know how many, like, I mean, we have, what, I think six different proposals. Are we gonna like interview three or what are we, what are we gonna try to narrow it down to for the interviews? Is that hasn't been decided yet. Uh, okay. well, let me give it to the president of council. And uh, but okay. I'm I'm thinking three. Okay, that's that's what I thought. Just curious. Justine, I do have one comment. Yeah. And I came a little bit late to the meeting, but was there any discussion uh, or any acknowledgement of the passing of uh, Pat De Blasio Senior? No. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. I mean, I just uh, wanted to take the opportunity because Pat was on planning commission for many years. Uh, I think uh, most of you are aware of that. He was very much an out of the box thinker. And whether you agreed or disagreed with Pat, he, he, you, know, you always had to have your thinking cap on when he was talking. Yeah. It was, no. Truthfully, it was a lot of fun to listen to him. Uh, He's a very he always man. had the borough's best interest at heart. Uh, that man gave a lot, and you know, I think that uh, I'm hoping that uh, that the council can see its way fit to do something, uh, even if just a moment of silence uh, at their next meeting for Pat. Well, I know. Well, they. I know at the at the meeting they just had, they did. Okay. They, uh, they they spoke of him very fondly. Yeah, Pat was. He was. He was a lot of fun. He really was. I. He was the original out of the box thinker. Yeah, I agree. All right. So I'm going to give Bob Fryer two minutes. That's that's long enough. I just want to mention one other thing about Pat de Blasia. There were uh I was in, involved with the planning on his funeral service and so on. There were hundreds of visitors at the funeral home and the family uh, for the funeral mass over at Holy Child Church, I forget the name of it now. Uh, they, the family had two opera type singers, a guy and the girl, and the uh, funeral service was the most uh, moving I've ever attended. It was uh, really uh, something uh, to behold. At any rate, I just want to mention uh, about uh, the importance of having some face-to-face -face meetings since you guys are going to be involved in the planning and the future of the community, uh, the face-to-face -face meetings with certain safeguards about the, the COVID-19 flu, it would allow presentations to be made of drawings where everybody could look at the same drawing and you could have two-way conversations between your planners and the drawings or myself and the drawings or whatever. And uh, the third thing I want to mention is uh, I, I don't know what member of the commission <clears throat> uh, cited that a comprehensive plan should provide benefits to the surrounding communities. That's the key to everything. If you guys come up with a plan that will end the mile long columns of traffic that sit outside Bridgeville trying to get through, that that is as much of a deterrent for the businesses and people in Suffolk calling it up for St. Clair. You won't have to worry about the money. But remember, Washington Avenue is a PennDOT road and Bar Hill Road is an Allegheny County road. If you do it right, you'd, you'll be paying very little for some spectacular improvements you can request for those two main thoroughfares. And again, thanks very much for allowing time to talk to you guys tonight. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments? Um, I'd summarize, but I've lost my notes. So 
Anyway, a motion to adjourn. I make the motion. Second. Second. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. Thank you.